ratios in a nuclear medium. Okay, I think it's working now. Okay, uh, I want to talk about this uh, octet variant double ratio G star over GM star over G over GM in nuclear medium. The last minute I had this subtitle, Study of Electromagnetic Structure of, in ba of Variants in Median, just to give an idea about motivations. So work that I developed in collaboration with Kazut uh, Tsushima and Sean uh, Pacheco de Mello. And uh, before starting my talk, I just want to thank the organizers for the opportunity to come here and present this work. So this is just the motivation of the to uh, plan of my talk. I'll start motivation to study these double ratios. Then I'll introduce briefly the formalism, formalism that I use to calculate the form factors in vacuum and medium. I'll finish with the results for the Yes. Up and down. OK, good. Okay, it's good that I didn't say anything important yet. Okay, it's better now? Okay, the, oops, the, the results are presented in this recent preprint. Just a note about the notation. When I put some, some variable with a star, it means that I'm referring to the variable or the function in nuclear medium. Okay, motivation. Part of the motivation came from the experiments in Javasan lab that started in around 1999 where they develop a new method to calculate the ratio between the electromagnetic form factor and the magnetic form factor of the proton uh, in vacuum. And it was based on this polarization transfer method uh, where essentially they use electron proton scattering where the initial electron was polarized and the final pro proton was polarized. So measuring the polarization of the final proton, measuring the parallel and longitudinal polarization, they can calculate G over GM. Some results are presented here, uh, but they are normalized by the uh, magnetic form factor of the proton. So uh, we thought, OK, so can we also measure the, uh, the electron form factors of the proton or the ratio in a case where the, the proton uh, is in a, is a bound state, is in a median? And uh, in this case, what you have to do is use the same method, but now we can measure the ratio of G star over GM star and uh, defining this, this ratio uh, and combining this with the results in a vacuum. If you calculate this ratio, uh, we can see if the results are, if the, this ratio is one, means that there is no median modifications. If there is uh, median modifications, this ratio should be different from one. Uh, so, some results are presented here, experimental results from these papers here, and I'm presenting also some calculations, and the calculations are performed for two different densities. One, rho zero is normal nuclear density, and we perform also calculations of half of the value. Uh, interesting thing here is that we can see that because this double ratio is smaller than one, the theory and the, more, and the experimental, experimental data, uh, we can conclude that there is a suppression of this ratio. And from the, our calculation, we can see that there also a dependence in this uh, density. We can go on and ask, oh, what about the neutron? Can we also uh, perform, the, can we also measuring or uh, the effect of G over GM for the neutron? Uh, there is no result till now, but all the calculations uh, they suggest that uh, the G over GM should be announced in a medium. And here I'm showing just an, an example where the results uh, here are larger than one, which means that we, in principle we expect announcement of the G over GM. We can go on and think about other variants like sigma plus, sigma minus, lambda and sigma zero, neutral particles, and also even the cascades. So that's the main motivation to this work study electromagnetic structure of octet bearings 
in medium. So we'll start with a model developed some time ago and we use those results and look for the medium modifications in this ratio. Uh, so the method that we use is, a, is based in a, what we call covariance petit quark model. This is a model for the quarks degrees of freedom, but where include also uh, a component with the associated with the pine cloud. Uh, the model was first developed for the medium, for the vacuum. It was calibrated physical and lattice QCD data, and then was extended to the medium uh, with the uh, help of a quark meson complex model that Kazu introduced already, which is also related with the cloudy bag model. So, uh, in this framework here, we the variants are considered like on Mars shell particles in a medium, but with a different mass, Mb star. So, star means in a medium. So, taking into account the, ma the, the modification in the masses and the coupling constants, we can look for the effects in a valence, park, valence quark part and the pine cloud part. So, the covariance petit quark model, in our, this model, the bearing is just a system of three quarks uh, with the wave function described by these symmetries, but the radial wave function is adjusted phenomenologically, including some momentum uh, scales that I'll mention in the next slides. And the starting point is a system with three quarks, but where you consider two of the quarks are on mass shell. So what you can do is kind of integrating these internal degrees of freedom and replace this quark pair by effective like quark with a certain mass MD. And in this process, we define effective quark-like quark wave function. About the pine cloud excitations, we consider um, a phenomenological parameterization based in the SU3 symmetry for the barium meson coupling and also some chiral perturbation uh, theory constraints. So the wave functions for octet are presented here. Uh, in a, this quark-like quark system, the, we expect that the mean contribution came from the S state, so we have to consider two pieces, one associated with the states with the like quark with spin zero, another one uh, with the states of the like quark with spin one, and we have to consider uh, uh, flavor states that are symmetric in exchange of two quarks and anti-symmetric in exchange of these two quarks. The explicit form from the scalar wave function or the other functions, it's here. I forgot to mention one thing here. Uh, down. So I'm using P for the moment of the bearing and K for the moment of the like quark. So uh, the radial function can be expressed in terms of the moment of the quark square, which you can rewrite in terms of this variable chi, where we include a dependence of the mass in the mass of the bearing and the mass of the like quark. So essentially, you consider two poles. Uh, one, one of the poles is associated with a long range uh, scale, which is the same for all the, the variants. For the, uh, and we consider an, another uh, pole with a, a parameter depends of the family, B2, B3, and B4, which uh, describe the short range, which is different from system to system. At this point, we are breaking SU3 at the level of the radial wave functions. So about the coupling, the photon coupling, uh, we consider that our quarks are constant quarks, so we will describe the, uh, their own structure in terms of form factors. This structure includes quark anti quark effects, groove and dressing, and so on. And we parameterize this in terms of different functions associated with different SU free structure. So we have one structure associated with the uh, isoscalar component, another one is a vector, and uh, this F10 and F20 are associated with a strange quark. We have two kinds of form factors because we have the Dirac and the Pauli structure. Uh, to parameterize these functions, we consider vector meson dominance parameterization for the following. So it's like this vertex here, we have a photon that is converted into quark anti quark pair, but they can interact one time, two times, and so on, just like a long tower. And the simple way to parameterize this is a vector meson dominance parameterization. We take the approximation that the rho is equal to the mass of the omega. For the U and D, we consider mass, a mass on the policy with the mass of the row, and we consider effective uh, mass vector meson with a mass twice of the mass of the nucleon to parameterize the short range structure. For the strange quark, we use the mass policy with the mass of the, the phi. 
So almost all these coefficients are determined in previous works by the studies of Vuclin and the Baryon decuplets. The ones that we adjust, readjust here are the, only the anomalous magnetic moments of the quark U and D, or if you want, isoscalar and isovector uh, anomalous magnetic moments. Uh, when they consider the Meson cloud, we have to, in the first order, we have to consider these different diagrams. The first is just a coupling of the photon with the quark, but we have a coupling of the photon with a pion and a coupling of the photon with some intermediate meson, uh, intermediate, intermediate baryon here. Actually, we have two couplings, coupling with a, a Dirac part and a, no, a coupling with an anomalous magnetic moment. Uh, all these functions are the same, B tilde, C tilde, and D tilde. These six functions are the same for all octet in the context of SU6 symmetry. The dependence and the flavor comes from these functions here. So we can project, we can calculate uh, the, these terms projecting the flavors, and we have different coupling constants depending on the baryon. And in the SU6 limit, we can express all these couplings in terms of one parameter, 0.6 and a coupling constant, which we don't know, need to know because you can absorb in these uh, functions here. So knowing the, uh, fitting this function to the data, what we do actually is the, the, to compose the form factor in the bare part and pi and cloud part, part and uh, in the middle we calculate also this normalization uh, factor. So let me explain the collaboration. We start with the lattice KCD data where we just uh, we have six parameters associated with the bar part. This is, we can do this because in, a, in, in principle, in a lattice state, there is no pine cloud contamination. So what we derive is derive a parameterization for lattice KCD data, and then we extrapolate to the physical regime, obtaining the bar contribution to the, to the physical uh, form factors. Uh, taking into account the physical data, including nuclear form factor, octet magnetic moments, and octet ready, uh, we finished the, the process of calibrating the model to the, to the vacuum. So we have six parameters for the bare part, five coefficients and two cutoffs for the pion cloud part. Uh, the process of extension to the nuclear medium is the following. We start with a current defining vacuum that we extend to the medium replacing the dependence of the masses in vacuum by the dependence masses in medium. The coefficients are the same. A reality function, we have a dependence in the mass of the, of the variant in vacuum, we replace that by the mass of the variant in medium. With that, we obtain the bare, uh, the bare contributions in a medium. Uh, about the pion cloud contribution in medium, we describe in the next slide. Uh, so, in the results in medium, we have to know the masses and coupling constants for the different densities that we are considering. We Calculate these uh, masses and coupling constants based in co uh, quark meson coupling model. Uh, so the, there is a formula to calculate the masses in the medium. The results for the masses are here. Using the Goldberg treatment relation, can calculate also the modifications in the coupling constants. So just, just a note about the, the notation for the magnetic form factors. Uh, the magnetic form factors here are converted in terms of the units of the, me, uh, the nuclear in vacuum. Uh, so, because we want to, comp we want to compare the, the magnetic form factors of the bearings with the ones of the nuclear. So, to do that, we have to write the magnetic moment in units of the nuclear, which are these, uh, which can, it's done here. So, the, from this comes this factor, the mass of the nuclear, of the, the mass of the bearing. Of course, in medium, we have to put the mass of bearing in medium. So much time do you have now? Mm. 15. 15, great. So uh, this is the results from the octet form factors. In, uh, in vacuum here, we have results for G and GM, and we isolate the contribution for valence quarks, dashed line, pi and cloud, uh, dot, dotted dashed line, and solid line is the final result. Uh, here I'm showing the results for the ratios between the form factors in median and in vacuum. But I'll skip uh, some of the slides. The important thing is to, sh to tell you that in most, most cases the, the valence quark part is the dominant part. There's a few exceptions. One is the sigma zero, 
where the electric conform factor is in fact dominated by a pine cloud part. The same thing, oops. Sigma zero and lambda are dominated, the electric conform factor is dominated by, by the pine cloud part. I can summarize the main properties of these results. For in both vacuum and medium, we have a dominance of valence quark, quark component. An extension to the medium, we have also dominance of valence quark component. In, uh, in general, the variance you see due to the pine cloud is less than 4%, with exception of lambda and sigma zero. For the electron form factor of these particles, they are two, both dominated by pine, pine cloud part. So now I'm now ready to show the results for the double ratios. This is the, the, just a single ratio for the proton. This is the result of G over GM in vacuum, and this is the result in a, for rho equal to the normal dens uh, nuclear density. Uh, start with the, 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 the magnitude near Q square equal to zero is essentially dominated by the effect of the mass because uh, G is equal to one. Uh, so this ratio is essentially proportional to the, the mass of, effective mass of the nuclear. So there is suppression of the, uh, the states which are ma with smaller masses. Uh, also, uh, at look to square, you can perform expansion of this ratio in terms of the electrical uh, square radius of the, of the proton and the magnetic square ratio of the proton. So you obtain this simple uh, expression, which suggests, uh, uh, you know, a linear uh, fall off, and we don't have that, but we have almost a linear, uh, almost a linear fall off. In the case of the vacuum, this fall off is slow because this factor is small. In medium, this value is enhanced, so the fall off is is, slow, is faster. So, in any case, from this graph, you can already see that G over GM is suppressing medium. I'm repeating the first, the first uh, graph that I show you. So G over GM is in fact suppressing medium, as I mentioned before. The suppression is larger for larger densities. And in this case, the data that I'm showing is the data extracted from alien 4 uh, is in fact more closer to the estimate for half the normal de nuclear density than the, than the nuclear density, normal nu nuclear density. So about the neutron, okay? I'm showing the G A star over G A and G M star over G M. In both cases, you can see that they are both enhanced in medium, and the enhancement increases with the density. Uh, in the case of the neutron, you can do look for the expansion and writing the the electric form factor in terms of the square radius of the neutron. So if there is enhancement G, it means that this radius radius is enhanced. Uh, of course, this is a result, this ratio here is the result of the, what I said before. And uh, for log Q square again, uh, the results for the magnetic form factor, you can look the, the depend of the mass, and also you have enhancement of both, uh, of both form factors. The combination of the two things at log Q square is that the, this double ratio is larger than one. Uh, this means that if the effect in G is stronger uh, than the effect in GM. And that's what we see here. So the combination of all the factors is that the, the double ratio for the neutron is larger than one. So we can conclude this ratio is enhanced in nuclear medium. But contrary to the case of the proton, the key square dependence here is more important. It's not linear as before. And actually, the effect of the announcement decreases with Q square at some point is close to one. And for large Q square, actually, we have a suppression of the effect. Let me show the results for sigma plus and sigma minus. I'm showing plotting here just the double ratios. Uh, they are very similar to the case of the proton, except that the fall off is smaller. Thank you. Uh, so if the fall off is smaller, it means that this factor here is reduced compared to the, the proton. So we can interpret this as the effect of the strange quark, which means that the uh, strange quarks have less, uh, have smaller effects in the medium. 
lambda. Lambda I'm plotting g over g here, and the gm star over gm here. Uh, in the case of g is dominated, uh, according to our question, is dominated by a fine cloud uh, component, and you can see that the variation for log u square is not significant, it's close to one. And uh, so in this case, the gm, it is announced in median because this effect is larger than one, is the dominant effect. And this is a consequence of the valence quark effects. So in this case, in double ratio, expect the gm to dominate the double ratio. G, uh, sigma zero, the results are very similar. So here I'm showing the, the two results, uh, lambda and sigma zero, the double ratio for log Q square. Uh, log Q square results are sup uh, similar to the proton because there is a suppression. When you increase Q square, the, you start to see some announcement of the, of the, the ratio. Okay, at some point you have a divergence because our model average, uh, says that the form factor of electric form factor in vacuum should be zero at some point. About the cascades, the results for cascades are here. In case of cascades, our model is, uh, we present only an uh, estimate because uh, in a calibration we don't describe so well the lattice QCD data, but uh, we think we can build, conclude anyway that uh, the main conclusion that the, we have a weak dependence in Q square uh, of the ratio in the medium. So let me present my conclusions. We present some calculations for the octet variant form factors in nuclear medium, combine two, two models, called variant spread quick quark model with quark mesonic component model. So we are proposing tool to study electromagnetic structure of variants in medium can be used in several processes like FBI collisions, <laughs> neutron stars, and compact stars. Our final conclusion is that we expect a reduction of the effect in medium, of the ratio in medium for the proton, sigma plus sigma minus. For the neutron, we expect some announcement of the double ratio and uh, some announcement of effects. And the other cases, uh, lambda and sigma zero, we expect a reduction for log q square and announcement for large q square, and for the cascade, we expect a weak dependence in q square. So the good news is that there is measurements for, of the nuclear double ratio I expect from near future, based on this reaction here, LN4 to LN3. So we can test our prediction at that point. And final note is we hope that in near future or new techniques can be used to, do, to measure the double ratio somehow in the, in, the, in the medium for other variants. So thank you very much. Okay. So. so this was before time, so we have time for questions. Are there I probably missed this at the very beginning, the technical question. How do you introduce density in the first place? Via a chemical potential, or is there a more direct way? So, you've pick, you pick the density you want, you use the quark meson coupling, to calculate effect, to calculate the effect, our density for us is a, is a parameter. You can choose zero is the background. Sure, but but how do you how, how do you know how your couplings react with density? Uh, we expect that you know for heavy ions, you have at the limit we have a you know a very when interaction is strong, we expect that it is the result is the normal de nuclear density, right? In other cases, uh, for for instance, in the case of the of the helium four, the density should be like 0.7 the nuclear density. But uh, for us, the density is input. Mm, okay. So pick your density, calculate your effective masses. In a median, and if 
and calculate effective uh, uh, coupling constant in uh, according with uh, our equations from this model here. Kazu, can you complement? Can you pass the microphone? Maybe you did my talk. Uh, quark and uh, light quark and uh, mean field, uh, mean field, meson field coupling constant is calibrated by the nuclear matter saturation property. It reproduces nu nuclear matter saturation. Then coupling constant. Yes. Yeah. Then mass is determined, calculated. Yeah. For the given details, density, you can calculate the mass. You have some fields here that uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm relying on this, <laughs> these references here. Hello. Yeah. So I have a question. Just is very simple question actually. So if I understand well, in order to calculate, evaluate the form factor, you require a vector meson dominance, right? Say again. Yeah. We in order to evaluate vector um, form factor. Yes. You ev you require vector meson dominance, right? I use um, a version of the. Vector meson dominance. Yeah, here. in this version, there apply, is some apply, limitation. Apply it to the quark structure. This is a coupling of photon with a quark. It's our, it's our, the way we describe interaction of the photons with the quarks. Quarks? Yes. Quark current. Okay, uh, okay, let me. You have a photon, right? Yes. So this photon converts into. Mesons, right? The photo interacts with the quark the way you can s describe that uh, that uh, effect is like, okay, the photon is converting in some, in some meson and the meson interacts with, with the quark. The final result is that you can describe each of these functions in terms of a vector meson dominance, which means the combination of uh, vector mesons with certain poles. Okay, but yeah. in, in principle, there is, uh, yes, the, yeah, there's precisely the vector meson dominance. There is a whole meson there over, over there. In principle, there is some limitation of this, right? Say again? There is a, a limitation of this vector meson dominance. Okay, in general, you should I think write it's one GV. an infinite series of, of poles. We say, okay, we are interested in, yeah. uh, in uh, okay, log u squared with many effectives is this mass of the rho or mass of the phi. For all, all the others, we just consider effective uh, term with which a heavy value with heavy mass that we fix in most applications as twice the mass of anything. It's like effective uh, parameterization of the short range. So uh, our, physics, mean, our physics is in these parameters, and these parameters are adjusted by the, the, our results for the nuclein and the baryon octet because of the strange quark. Do you know uh, what's your limitation to use the vector meson dominance until what's what's the, the scale? Because oh, your your I, plot until I think k square is three. If I remember your graph is three GV. How, how much? Three. Three GV. Yes, if I, I remember well your figures. You're talking about the usual vector meson dominances or all. Uh, you, you back to uh, I have to look for the references, but uh, okay, we it's a that's a parameterization. So some of the limitations are are uh, you know uh, we have sorry M H is M H is twice the mass of the nuclein. It's like uh, okay, actually is is not three GeV, but uh, it's small it's smaller than that, but. Uh, Uh, Gilberto? Yes. Gilberto? Yes. Can you extend your calculations for the time-like region of the nucleon form factors? 
uh, I don't want to uh, because uh, there is a few poles here that uh, this model, we talked about this model and this calibration to the time-like, uh, to the space-like. Uh, in principle, yes, the weight is represented the present way, no, maybe. <laughs> Somehow is it somehow is included there, right? Uh, so there is no easy way. In principle, yes, but at the moment I'm not thinking about that because there is some technical <laughs> problems. Except uh, unless you want to look for a very large Q square. In that case, you can think, okay, uh, you have this theorem that says that the form factors for large capital Q square are the same as minus uh, capital Q square, but that's syntotic region. Okay. Okay, so I think we have to close because there's another talk. Let's thank the speaker again. Sure. And now the next speaker is Chen Chen. He's going to talk about the structure of the nucleons low-lying excitations. Get it from your office, you don't have a computer. Our mobile desk is big. Yeah. Yeah, but I have to bring it to me from the computer. Yeah. I don't have the cable for the. So I go to my office and I come here. It would make more sense, right? Why should you use mine? <laughs> I don't want to use mine in our state. No, I don't. <laughs> I didn't produce it. Okay, go ahead. So I think this is a good moment to think about if 
the next speakers had already put their slides on the computer. <laughs> if not, this is a good time to do it. Comes afterwards. <laughs> Lunch, uh, coffee break, but uh, it's okay. Uh, oh, Tobias, I Tobias is, uh, and then Fabio. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for the organizers. Uh, it's my honor to have a presentation in this workshop. My presentation's title is uh, Structure of Neutron's Low Lying Excitations. We don't have from long perturbative uh, QCD, QCD, we don't have hadrons as the bond states are uh, dominated by long perturbative QCD dynamics. The two uh, emergent phenomena. The first one is a confinement. It can explain, it means the colored particles have never been seen isolated. It can explain how quarks and the gluons bind together. The second phenomenon is a dynamical chiral symmetry breaking. It means the hadrons do not follow the uh, chiral symmetry pattern. It can explain the most important mass generation mechanism for visible matter in the universe. Uh, neither of these uh, phenomena is uh, apparent in QCD's Lagrangian. However, they play a dominant role in determining the characteristics of real-world QCD. From quantum field theory point of view, this uh, emergent phenomena could be associated with dramatic uh, dynamically driven changes in uh, analytic structure of QCD's string functions the propagators and the vertices. Uh, the swing functions are solutions of the quantum equations of motion, Dyson swing equations. Uh, for example, the dressed quarks propagators the Dyson swing equation. The, the uh, di Feynman diagram uh, is, uh, is this, uh, like uh, uh, 
uh, Christian said uh, this morning. Uh, so, in this, uh, so in this equation, we can know that mass uh, generated from the interaction of quarks with gluon. And uh, we, sh we will know that light quarks acquire a huge constituent mass. And it is uh, responsible for the 98% of the mass of the proton and the largest splitting between party partners. This is the famous result of Dyson's equations. It compares the lattice, the lattice data, the dots, and the Dyson, corresponding Dyson's ring results, these three solid curves. Um, besides the box propagator, uh, Dyson's equations, there are also many other Dyson's equations. The, well, for, this is for the box, for the grown propagator, for the ghost grown vertex, and for grown, grown propagator and the quark grown vertex. And the Dyson's equation is a lump of battle uh, symmetry preser preserving tool for the study of continuum QCD. It is well suited uh, to realistic quantum field theory. It is a method that collects uh, observables with long range behavior of the running company and uh, the experimental and uh, theory comparison leads to an understanding of the long range behavior of the strong running company. We, uh, the, we know that the hydrons are bound states in quantum field theory. Uh, hydrons include uh, mesons. Meson is a uh, two-body two bounding, st bounding state problem in quantum field theory. So we need the corresponding bounding state uh, equation is the beta space equation. It is a famous diagram of the, the beta space equation where this, this, uh, this, this K uh, is a fully amplitude two particle in registrable quark and quark scattering kernel. And the two, the gamma is the uh, meson's beta spread amplitude, and the black black circle is uh, represents the quark propagator. Uh, we also have uh, bayons. Bayon is a three-body bound state problem in quantum field theory. The corresponding uh, uh, bound state uh, equation is the FADF equation. It sums all possible quantum field theoretical exchange and uh, interactions that can take place between the three dressed quarks that defines the valence quark content. This uh, is the uh, uh, equations uh, family diagram. The orange cycle means the FADF uh, uh, amplitude and uh, the, this is broke. And the, it includes the uh, uh, three body in reducible, uh, uh, in reducible uh, scattering kernel and uh, two body uh, in reducible scattering kernel. But uh, in order to solve this uh, two body and uh, three body bound state equations, uh, we need a truncation of, of uh, this kernel. This is, uh, we use a uh, one group exchange to represent this kernel. We call it a rainbow ladder. It is the simplest uh, symmetry preserving preserving uh, truncation. And uh, in the in the better space equation, this is the uh, uh, rainbow ladder truncation of a better space equation. And uh, in the better space equation, we like the three body three body interactions, and uh, we use a uh, one group exchange to represent the. Uh, interactions between any pair of three valence quarks. We know that uh, uh, mesons, uh, is, is mesons are quark and quark correlations. It is a color singlet. And uh, we also have, uh, inside of bayons, we also have quark, uh, quark, quark correlations in color singlet bayons. We call it diquarks. The diquark correlations in our approach the long point like uh, color anti triplet and uh, fully interaction. Diquark's correlations are soft. They process an electromagnetic size only to the properties of charge conjugation. A diquark with the spin party GIP may be viewed as a partner of the uh, analogous of G minus P meson. Here is uh, here is the formula of um, 
uh, meson and the corresponding dive park in Ramblad truncation. The upper upper formula is the meson's better spread equation, and the lower formula is the dive park's better spread equation. We can see that the only difference is uh, one over two factor in the dive park's better spread equation. Uh, like just like the mesons, there are many different kinds of dive parks corresponding, uh, they have different uh, function numbers. For example, we have uh, isoscalar scalar dive park with quantum number isospin zero and uh, G zero and with positive property. And uh, we also have uh, iso vector, pseudo vector dive park with uh, quantum number isospin one J one, J X one with and uh, positive property. We also have a negative property, negative property uh, dive box. And uh, there maybe uh, there should be should have other tensor dive box. For, for uh, with the half of dive box, well, the three body bound state equation can be simplified to a quark dive box two body bound states. So this is the three-body effective equation. We use the concepts of dive box. It can be simplified to a two-body uh, quark dive box effective uh, equation. The psi psi here is the quark dive box effective amplitude, and these two gamma here are the amplitude of dive box. This double line represent, represents the Dive box propagator is a single uh, line represents the box standard by standard dive box propagator. We saw that a dive box emits a single quark that combine with the by standard quark to form a new dive box. Uh, so we, we, in principle, we can solve this quark. Uh, Dive quark fat uh, equation, but uh, from the very bottom, we in principle we need uh, we need to solve the uh, quark density equation. We need to solve the uh, dive quark density equation. We need to solve the uh, dive quark better speed equation to get all the information. But uh, this is uh, uh, a bit more complicated. We we in order to simplify the calculation, we can use uh, we can use model. In, in our work, we use a QCD kindred model. In this model, uh, it, it should uh, include the, we have a model for the dressed quark propagator. We need a model for the dive box amplitudes. We need a model for the dive box propagators. And uh, we also need the effective amplitudes. And this is not the model. This is uh, uh, algebraic, uh, algebraic results. and. Uh, I don't want to say many det mathematical details of our model. We just, just, I just want to sim simply say that our model are based on previous, uh, previous uh, studies of hadrons and it's a uh, Poincaré convert. And uh, in our model, the quark and the dye quark are confined. In my point of view, Oh, no, no. This is the uh, parameters for, for, for the model. The only parameter we need is the dive quark masses. In our calculation, we put uh, all the uh, positive priority and the negative priority dive quarks in our model. So we choose, so we choose the mass for scalar dive quark, for extra work dive quark, for pseudo scalar dive quark, and uh, for Vector dive box. The first two values, positive uh, extra dive box and extra dive box, provide a good uh, description of numerous dynamic properties of Newton, Lambda, and uh, Roper. The masses of the latter two for the pseudo scalar and the vector dive box, uh, they are based on the, those computed from a contact interaction. We have a study of contact interaction based on contact interaction of this Bayon's nuclear excitations. In this paper, we calculate the Bayon's spectrum, include all kinds of dive box we use based on contact interaction. So we, from this paper, we got some insights 
or experiments of to have the information of the dipox mass. Uh, such values are typical, and uh, in the Ramalala truncation, the isoscalar vector and isoscalar, isoscalar vector and the iso vector vector correlation are degenerate, which means the last uh, the last mass of vector of of vector dipole are degenerate. The, and uh, we use uh, uh, normalization to determine the strength or couplings of this, uh, this type of, this is their results. We said the iso vector vector type of coupling is the smallest. So in order to simplify this, uh, our calculation in our work, we simply neglect this part, this iso vector vector type of in our calculation. So with this, the fatty kernel, which uh, 22 by 22 mat matrices can are reduced to 60 by 60. And uh, there's another parameter, GDB. Uh, I, want, I want to explain uh, in, in details. There's the uh, absence of the uh, spin optical repulsing only to the uh, oversimplification of ramblider truncation. So we use, uh, just use a uh, parameter in order to mimic the missing interactions. We introduce uh, a single parameters in body equ equation for negative and positive and negative pions. GDB is a linear multiplicative factor attached to each opted priority dipole amplitude in Bayon's body equation kernel. What does it mean? It means for the positive priority bayons, we we use this GDB times uh, the negative baryon, negative dipole uh, uh, couplings. For the negative, uh, negative parity baryons, we use this GDB times the positive dipole baryons. So GDB is the only free parameter in our study. The masses are not free parameters. In my point of view, the biggest success of this model is the solution of a 50 n puzzle, the Roper resonance. Uh, the, the, in this paper, they calculate the <coughs> transition form factors of neutron to Roper, and they proved that uh, the neutron is uh, uh, Roper is neutron first radio excitation. <laughs> One of the author is here, Bruno. <laughs> okay, let me say something about uh, our, our study. Uh, we calculate, uh, we use this realistic uh, QCD kindred model to calculate the structure of nucleons. Low lying excitations include, uh, include the four lightest bayons, uh, iso spin doublet nucleon. Roper N star 50 certified, which is the first uh, electric priority bayon, and uh, its uh, first excitation N, N star 6050. We, in this work, we calculate their masses, their rest frame orbital angular moment, the dipark content, and the point wise structure of uh, wave functions. First uh, is uh, the mass. We choose GDB so as to reproduce the mass splitting of 0.1 GeV, the, which is the experimental splitting of nucleon of Roper and uh, the N star 5035. Uh, our, compu our computer results are listed here. The Okay, the first law, we, cal we calculate the mass of nucleon, the mass of rope, the mass of N star 5035, and then the mass of 6050. 
the first law cross, uh, corresponding to the values of GDB equals the point four three, and the second uh, row values are obtained from GDB equals one. We can see that we change the value of GDB from point four three to one. The masses of positive parity bearings are never changed, but uh, the masses of negative parity bearings changed uh, quite a lot. We can, we, see that, we can see that the pseudo scalar and the web diaper have a low impact on the masses or the two positive parity bearings, whereas the scalar and the pseudo vector diaper are important to negative parity systems. And uh, we can also see that our results are a little larger than the experimental results. I can explain in the following. The, we know that the quark, uh, quark diaper uh, kernels omits all the uh, resonance contributions with the meson bayon final state uh, interactions that are resulted in dynamical capital channels models in order to transfer bare meson into the observed state. Which, what does it mean? It means the observed experimental state is not a massive uh, bare state. Okay, thank you. The fatty equation analysis uh, to uh, produce the results could, could uh, therefore be understood as uh, pr producing the dressed quark core of the front state, not the complete dressed quark and uh, hence observed as uh, uh, object. In consequence, a comparison between experimental value of the resonance and the computer mass is not pertinent. Instead, one should compare the masses of quark core with the Values determined from uh, bare excitations. This we should compare like uh, this. The first row here is our results. And the second row here are the results from inferred from the associated dynamical uh, dynamical capital channel analysis. The relative difference is just 1.7 percent. We consider this as be a success of our calculation. We need to say here. These two calculations are totally independent, and but uh, they it seems they they are very close. Next, I want to say something about the rest of the angular momentum. Uh, this this figure here, upper upper panel and the lower panel, are the wave function uh, wave function fractions of uh, these two states. The wave, S wave function fractions of neutral. G wave fractions, D wave fraction of neutral, uh, Roper, N star 50, 35, and uh, N star 50, N star 50, 60, 50. The A, upper, F, upper panel is computed from wave function directly. The B results are computed from relative contribution to the masses. The, the B delivers, uh, we can see that the Lower panel delivers the same uh, quantitative picture, so uh, as uh, presented in A, therefore, there is a mi little mixing between partial waves in the computation of Bayon's masses. The, we can say that the neutron and the the positive, pro pro positive parity Bayon's are primarily uh, SV in nature. On the other hand, the D the P Electric parity bayons are essentially P way in character. This, uh, this ob observ observations provide, provide support in quantum field theory for the con constitutional quark model classifications of these systems. Uh, we also calculate the diaphragm fractions of this system. This is the, just like the wave functions. This is the Four different type of fractions of neutron, uh, rope, uh, N star 50, 35, and uh, N star 60, 50. They are uh, blue bar are the uh, scalar type of uh, fraction. Uh, green bar are the uh, actual vector type of fraction. This uh, red bar are the uh, pseudo type of fraction, and the uh, orange bar are the uh, vector type of fraction. Uh, the upper panel are computed for uh, uh, the amplitudes directly. 
the lower, lower uh, panel are computed from the relative contributions to the masses. We can say from A, we can see that the amplitude associated with this negative bayons contains a roughly equal fractions of even and odd parity networks. For, but for those uh, positive parity bayons, the, the negative parity networks are almost zero. But from B, in each case, there is a single dominant quark count, count, content. Uh, there, it means there are significant interference between different networks. We also calculated the point-wise structure of a wave function of this four system. We consider the zero championship moments of all S and P wave components in given in given beyond spatial wave, wave function. The left is the S wave up uh, P wave lower of a neutron. The right part are the S wave and the upper and the P wave lower for uh, for rover. We can see that neutron force positive excitation. The rover part. All S wave components exhibit a single zero here. And uh, four of the P wave objects here, okay. Uh, Progenes also process a zero. This part of behavior for the first excitation indicates that it may be interpreted as a radio excitation. Here are, the, are our results for the laboratory part of bayons. Here is the S wave for N star 5035, and the P wave for N star 5035. This is the S wave, and the P wave for its radio first excitation. We can see that for this electric parity balance, the contrast with the positive parity states is stark. In particular, there is a low simple pattern of zeros, with all part panels contains at least one fractions that process are zero. Even in the ground state of positive parity balance, there is a zero in the wave function. And in the rest of the frame, this System are predominantly P wave in nature, but uh, process material S wave component and the first excitation here of this uh, electric parity bio uh, has a little of appearance of uh, radio excitation since the most function depleted in the right panel of the bigger do not process zero. We can see that they have a zero, but uh, most of them do not have a zero. Uh, based on this, uh, Based on this work, we recently have a new work. We calculate the spectrum and the structure of octet and the decoupled bayons and their positive priority excitations. We calculate their masses compared with experimental masses. We, uh, one of our success is we have a larger, the largest, the sigma mass is larger than lambda mass for ground states and uh, as well as for excitations. This is our summary. By including all kinds of networks, we performed a comparative study of four lattice uh, bayons. I thought been established in order to both elucidate their structure, similarity, and differences. Uh, the two lattice uh, positive parity doublets are dominated by the scalar and the pseudo vector networks. The associated uh, rest of the frame equation are Prevalently S wave in nature, but uh, the first excited state in, uh, in its uh, positive channel has very much of uh, the appearance of the uh, radio excitation of nucleon. Uh, but in the uh, two lattice electric parity system, two scalar and uh, pseudo web that will play a material role uh, in the rest frame, the uh, fat FM2 describing the uh, dressed quark core of this. Elective priority states contain roughly equal fractions of E1 and the, all the priority networks. The associated wave functions of this negative priority system are predominantly P wave in nature, but uh, have uh, lots of S wave component. And uh, last, the first excited state in this negative priority channel has a little of the appearance of the radio excitation. Uh, our, this is our next uh, plan. We want to calculate uh, the other excitation with the uh, spin three half, and we, we want to calculate their form factor. 
a part of the pattern distribution M2 and the pattern distribution functions and the others. Thank you. We have a couple of minutes for questions. So you stay, you, you pick the first microphone, I'll send you the other. Uh, your calculations of the resonance, for instance, like the Roper, give a mass much larger than the experimental value, right? Yeah, yes. So you know that in the case of the Roper, there's some calculations from the back uh, model that says that, okay, it's, it's okay if we have a, a quark mass of around 1700 because the effect of the meson cloud dressing reduces the mass to the physical. Yeah. Do you have any, there is there any signs that the same effect could, could uh, happen to the case of these uh, negative parity states like 1520 and 1650 in terms of the mass? So, sorry, again. Okay. Uh, you want to say the mass? I'm, I'm asking if there is any, yeah. if you think, including some H effects besides the quark models, is, do you think if there is some other effect can reduce the values of these masses to, close, to a, a result close to the experimental value, like in the case of the Roper? We just uh, know that the mass is reduced by the meson cloud. Mm. Uh, used already? Yes. Oh. The, the calculator calculated the mass uh, uh, only the result from just quark code, not include the not include the meson cloud effects. Mm. Okay. Okay. You calculated uh, the coupled the coupled biomass, but the delta mass. How did you calculate? In coupled channel and including meson cloud. No, well, not included. Oh, separate this. It's bare mass then, delta mass. Delta. Delta. Yeah. yeah. How did you calculate delta? Just use the same uh, QCD kindred uh, model we calculated. So bare mass was not, not coupled channel, coupled effects. Nuclear and delta, they couple or not? When you calculate the spin one half resonance, you use the meson uh, volume coupled channel and they re resonance mass reproduced. Three cock, bare cock, bare mass, okay. Okay, so if there are no more questions, let's thank the speaker again. So now we have the coffee break, and since we have... Okay, so we come back in 30 minutes. Esse negócio o que é, Linux? 
see more windows in which to base them. É, não, mas eu, eu fui rolar ele e o bicho não foi até o fim. É esse aí, ó, que vai apresentar? É. Deixa eu, deixa eu ver se vai até o fim. Thank you. 